Hey everybody, Rex here. Well, we finally coming down to the finish line. This is the last episode on this drawing tutorial of the man with the great hair, or as most people would identify him as, Jesus. Uh, I, it was a drawing from a painting, and uh, I was commissioned to do this drawing. So it's been quite a challenge because I am drawing from a painting rather than drawing from an actual real life photograph. So there's a first time for everything. But if you've been following this series, you know that we are now down to the garment, the fabric, the details of the fabric, and the folds. And that should complete the whole portrait. And so now we're finally down to that. Another thing I want to let you know is that because of the length of this final episode, I actually have to cut it into smaller parts of around 13 to 15 minutes each. So at the end of the video, it will tell you to go to this next episode and next episode. It's actually one long episode, final one, episode 13, but it's going to be uh, divided into parts. Part one, part two, part three, part four. Uh, whatever number of parts, I don't know yet until the tape hits the cutting floor. Oh, and one last thing. I am running this at one and a half times speed. What that means is that it's not exactly real time because real time was way, way, way too slow, but it's not exactly time lapse in that it is slow enough that you will see exactly every little thing that I'm doing and I'll be able to narrate it along the way. Okay, so I hope that I'm going to make both camps happy, those who like real time and those who like time lapse to find a nice common ground in the middle. And so without further ado, let's get right into this tutorial. Alright, in this tutorial we're going to be focusing on the garment that he is wearing in this image. And I'm going to go ahead and start with a 2B pencil. I'm not quite sure which pencil to start using. I want to start with the dark area just underneath the hair here. And so I'm going to try this 2B and see if it's going to give me the tone that I'm looking for. And it doesn't take me long to realize that it's not the tone I want, that it's a little bit on the light side. So I'm going to kind of work my way up. So here you see I'm going to use the 6B pencil and I'm going to give this a try. But just like the 2B pencil, I soon realize that it's not the tone I want and I'm going to then move up to a darker tone. So let's give the 10B pencil a try. It's probably about the darkest graphite um, that I'm going to try using here. No, I don't like that either. It's time for me to go into something a little bit darker. But before I do, I want to get some of this graphite I put off here because I'm going to be moving more in the charcoal range. And uh, the graphite would just make it a little harder for me to apply it. So here's a, a hybrid pencil. It would have like, you know, a carbon and graphite mix. It's called a 9XXB. And so I'm going to use that and see if that will give me the tone that I'm looking for. And I think I'm going to be happy with this one. Now I'm pretty much just going to focus more in the dark areas of this little tiny location. It's kind of like a triangle shape, as you can see there. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just kind of use this pencil in the darkest areas. I'll lighten up on the light areas, but then I'll just blend it to get that look that I'm looking for.
Now I'm going to go use this charcoal pencil here. It's a very soft charcoal pencil because I wanted to add a little bit uh, darker details in some areas within here before I get into the blending part. Okay, and now it's time for me to use this paper stump and now I'm going to blend this all in. And what this is going to do is not only is it going to give me my mid-tones in the areas that I had not applied any graphite or charcoal, but it's also going to lighten down a little bit that charcoal that I put on there. Uh, right now you don't see that, but it, it's going to dampen it down. And so and it has a slight eraser effect to it. All right, now I'm going to use this uh, low tack frisket tape here and uh, a little sharp stylus. It has a little tiny rounded point on it. I forgot what these things are called. I got it on Amazon. But uh, I use this tape here and I'm just going to start pulling off little areas in between the dark areas because I want to give it that texture. You notice where I'm currently pulling off. Uh, the um, charcoal and the graphite that's laid down and I'm looking to mimic the lightened areas on the image itself and mimic the shape of that lightened area as well. I gotta get this light thing uh, situated here it was annoying me yeah, so I could see better the reflection of the light kinda glares off the tape and I can't see what I'm doing And I'm carefully looking to match what I see in the reference photo. That's very important. I'm looking at the details and everywhere that I see that it's got a lighter mid-tone, I want to pull that off and the dark areas, I want to tone that down and I can do that using this tape method. Now with the tape method though, you, you can pull it almost all off back to the paper again, which is something that I have to try to avoid. And if if I happen to pull off too much, I can always blend it back in again with my paper stump. Now here I, I used up that last uh, piece of low tack frisket. So uh, I'm cutting up a sheet into uh, strips and uh, this just so I have a nice little supply uh, for you know when I need it later instead of having to keep stopping what I'm doing and cutting a little piece off. So I'm just going to cut this sheet up into strips half strips and so forth as you're just going to see. I left this part in so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, you have an idea because I know some of you are curious as to to what I do. And uh, then I'll once I cut them into the small strips I'll just put them over where my pencils are and grab one and then peel it and go ahead and use a nice clean strip as you'll see here shortly. Okay, here I'm going to peel the backing off of it so I can use the uh, low tack sticky side. 
Got to be nimble to do this. <laughs> Got to have nails. I don't have any nails. All right, now back back to getting those details pulled or put in there or pulled out, however you want to say that. And, and I'm constantly looking back and forth at the original. I want to mimic it as close as I can. I'm looking for realism here. So I'm looking at all the little details, where the little lines are. I want the pattern, the little kind of kind of a checkerboard pattern, somewhat irregular checkerboard, I should say. So I'm going in there and I'm pulling that out, you know, and then I'll tone them down, pull it out, tone it down. And you just going back and forth until you just get it exactly the way you want it. You know, and, and there's no rush. You know, you just, you, you take your time, you know, you move things around, you pull things off, you put things in, and, and that's how I operate. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to move on to the lighter part of the garment here that's adjacent to it. Uh, looks like I'm going to go with my 6 speed pencil here and get started with that. A little bit of a shadow lining here. But that's going to finish part one. And we're going to now move on to part two. Look down in the description area for, for the link for part two. <laughs> 